being a, a woman as part of a band ensemble, I feel like is um, a lot easier than, than being a, a female solo artist. I often talk um, to Sam, our singer, about it like that, you know, he doesn't have the same pressure because he's a man and if he wants to just, you know, get out of bed, not shave, not do his hair, chuck a t-shirt and jeans on and go be a rock star, he can. Hi, you're listening to Sam and Am Solve the World's Problems. Big problems, casual conversation. We have so many problems, you guys. <laughs> and that's why we've started season two of the podcast. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> welcome back if you've been listening before and welcome to any new listeners that we might have. Yes, we're very happy to have you. Um, we are really excited to be starting season two, actually. We've got a, a good lineup of guests um, and we're actually, first comes first, this is the major problem we're facing for season two right now is uh, we don't have a name for our army of listeners, our small, small army <laughs> of listeners. Of our listener. <laughs> yeah. Hi, listener. <laughs> what should we call you? Well, before <laughs> before a second ago, I want to bring this up because you literally were just like, well, Sam and M have the same amount of syllables as Dumbledore. I was like, well, why would we call our listeners Dumbledore? You said we need a, we need a name for our army. And I, and I was like, Dumbledore's army, Sam and M, Dumbledore. <laughs> they have the same amount of syllables. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sam are- thought I meant that oh. we should call our listeners Dumbledore. Yeah, because that's what you said. Yeah, but I that's not what I meant. You should have followed the brain waves. Okay, I'm sorry about that. So anyway, Dumbledore, it's great to have you back. Um- <laughs> <laughs> kind of hurts a little. <laughs> anyway, we're very excited for season two um, and honestly feeling very refreshed having had a little bit of time off there. Thank you for sticking with us. There was a bunch of you actually who just kept listening to our past episodes even when we weren't putting out new content. So thank you for it doing was all that. Me. Well, good. You didn't <laughs> listen to them before they aired. <laughs> yes, I did. I always proved them. No, it wasn't all me. Thank you, everyone who's been listening. Thank you, Dumbledore. We really thank appreciate you, Dumbledore. it. Thank you, Dumbledore. I don't know if we can keep that up for, for a long period no, of time. Can, can you please, listener, Dumbledore, listener, please give us a better name for you? Yeah, what should we call all of you together? Uh, we need suggestions. Please DM us on Instagram and let us know what, what you want to be called um, yeah. so we can refer to you. By your proper title. Personally. Yeah, we'd love to hear. But, yeah, uh, how was your time off, Sam? What did you get up to? Yeah, it was all right, but, you know, it was only two weeks and I'm already back at work and it feels like it was two minutes um, I feel like that's the general vibe whenever we have time off. But um, I got to go to a beach one time. Oh, my God. We, oh, so hold on. I have this story because we went to the beach. You came. Yeah, I us. know. I was about to be like, woo-woo, I was there. Yeah. Um, we went down to a beach, and the day before we were going to go down, we invited you, and you were like, wait, what beach do you want to go to? Or like, this beach. And you are like, that's on the news right now because somebody just died there. They jumped off a cliff. There's, so this beach is awesome because it has a waterfall and like a little lagoon and then that flows into the beach. So it's this beautiful little location and you're like, someone literally died there today. And we're like, oh, so when we went, we we went there anyway. Um, and there were reporters and things there and we had to like, it was still beautiful, but it was kind of kind of creepy. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Did you have a good time? <laughs> I feel like that whole story was a disaster from start to finish. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so another thing I did in my time off was... um, You know, you could have just said, uh, I went to the beach a few times. I went to the beach once and that was the one time and I feel like our listener deserve that story. Dumbledore, you deserves it. And the other thing that I did (laughs) on my time off, let's quickly move on, was disc golf. I had a really fun disc golf day. (laughs) I did. I believe you. You guys actually, you had awesome jerseys. Do you want to talk about the jerseys? Yeah, yeah. I bought um, some jerseys for Christmas. Um, we have these awesome Avatar jerseys. I wonder if we can include an Instagram post or something. Yeah, we but, should. Um, yeah, I have an Aang jersey. It's all the last Airbender jerseys. So I had an Air one and then the, we had the three other ones as well, Fire, Water. And anyway, it was really cool. We all wore these jerseys and went and played Frisbee golf, which is like normal golf, except you throw Frisbees nice. instead of hitting a small ball with a large club. Well, <laughs> how was your time off? My time off was great. I spent a lot of it at the beach um, because I got to go away with my family and with my partner's family and also went to the beach that one time with you, which we will move swiftly on. Um, and, yeah, it's been good. I have been able to recharge and it's been nice. So, yeah. Back at it, raring and ready to go for season two. Yes, and also for just 2021 in general, I think. 
Um, but we need to address something very serious, Sam, in that we did a whole episode where we talked about our New Year's resolutions and neither of us actually said what our New Year's resolutions were. Did we really not? Well, no, because we, like we hadn't decided yet. Oversight <laughs> on so that episode. I would like to say that my New Year's resolution for 2021 is not to buy into fast fashion. Um, so I'm not going to be buying. Um, and it's good that I'm saying this on live podcast because not live, but you know what I mean? So that you can hold me to it. <laughs> yeah. um, because if I'm going to buy from like fast fashion ba- brands, like my favorite is like Glassons and Princess Polly and stuff. I have to do it secondhand like the clothes have to be secondhand so they i'm like using apps like depop um and uh like op shopping and vintage shopping and stuff like that um and i'll allow myself to look at like slow sustainable fashion brands as well i could buy those like first hand if i want if i guess i want but yeah that's what my goal is is to not buy any fast fashion i'm allowing myself 10 things in the whole year just in case there's like an emergency black tie wedding, which happened to me this year. I had like a week to get a black tie oh, wedding so you dress. Have, you have 10 strikes, you're out. Yeah. Yeah. I can get 10 things this whole year that aren't from like secondhand or anything like okay. that. Yeah. Um, but ideally less. That's so. a really cool um, resolution. Yeah. I'm happy with it. Yeah. My, <laughs> my resolution this year is therapy. I want to take the leap. I want to go and I'm so scared of therapy for some reason. Seems terrifying, but last year I focused heavily on physical health and I feel like this year I should now balance that out with some mental health. Yeah. Figure all that out. Given how this intro has gone, I approve. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we'll see um, if I slowly become, I don't know, more, what's the word for stable? That's what it is. (laughs) (laughs) Lord knows you could use some of that. (laughs) Anyway. Let's (laughs) Let's <laughs> let's get into the most <laughs> unstable part of this whole intro. If you'd believe it, there's more to come. So this episode, you guys, oh, I can't believe this that. guest. I just, I just, it has literally been almost a month and a half since we recorded. We've the been episode sitting on this her. for so long. <laughs> you know who it is, and the lead up to it. Yeah, it's just been, it's been a long time coming. But also just the weirdest thing ever. You know who it is because you clicked on the episode. We're talking to Jen from Ballpark Music. Oh, my God. Ballpark is our favorite band. It is literally my favorite band of all time. Yep. They ha- My favorite song of all time fluctuates between Cherub and Exactly How You Are, depending on what kind of mood I am. But they're it's both newsflash. Ballpark songs. <laughs> both Ballpark songs. <laughs> like, Sam is the one who introduced me to Ballpark. I know your sister introduced you to Ballpark. Yeah, like a really long time ago. Ten um, years, I think we say in the episode. Yeah. So getting to talk to Jen was absolutely unreal. And Literally a dream come true for both of us. I just, we were so excited to be airing this. We have been, we have had so many moments where we've just looked at each other and been like screaming because <laughs> we didn't know how else to express how excited we were. Yeah. Um, but it, it's here, you guys. We are talking to Jen from Ballpark Music. I don't know what other introduction to give. Yeah, so please come along and fangirl with both of us as we... Um, Yeah, talk to... Basically our idol. Enjoy. Well, yeah, thank you so much for being on our podcast. We are genuinely so excited. Ballpark Music is... It's definitely my favourite band ever of all time. I think it's up there for you too, Sam. It literally, yeah. (laughs) And Thank you. I was going to say, my sister introduced me to Ballpark Music back when your first album came out, like Happiness and oh, Surrounding wow. Suburbs. And so yeah. that would have been, is that almost, has it been 10 years that, yet? Yeah, next year will be 10 years. Oh, wow. my God, yeah. yeah. And but weird, we're still 19 years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. oh, well. Still, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Sam actually introduced me. I'm 22 now and he mm-hmm. made me a CD for my 16th birthday and Ballpark oh. was on it. It was the first time I'd yeah. ever heard it. And I remember going oh, to school the next day and like awesome. playing it for my friends and they were like, yeah, this is so cool, yeah. And oh, now we've been to like so every Sydney show ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've seen you oh, many a times. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah, Thank your you. your music is absolutely, <laughs> it's part of my identity at this point. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, that is so cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> we wanted to uh, jump in and start by mm-hmm. asking you what sort of like music that you're into when you No, I mean, obviously, I don't imagine you listen to your ballpark <laughs> all the time or ever. No, but well, like, um, why wouldn't you though? Like, <laughs> True. It's great. It's great. 
I I must say I just did the like Spotify wrapped thing. Oh yeah. yes. And um, Ballpark was my number one. Listen. Oh nice. <laughs> But I, I think that's because I had to, like, learn a lot of songs. <laughs> when we played a residency at the Triffid in Brisbane, we did 13 shows, but we did a different set list for each each show. Yeah. So we had, we had like, 50 songs all together. Oh, my so, God. So uh, the ones some, – there were some that we'd never played live before or some that we hadn't played in nearly 10 years. So um, I did a lot of listening of the songs that we were going to play. So, uh, yeah, Ballpark ended up being my number one, but um, – yeah, I I'm really into disco music at the moment. Nice, um, and that's my like that's my happy place. That's my fun thing. So um, I've made a few playlists that I like to listen to, just to like I don't know, just to g me up and feel happy and I don't know, forget about the world. Is there <laughs> yeah. any specific songs on on your disco playlist you're happy to share? Well, uh, my, actually, the, the number one played song on my Spotify Wrapped, which I 100% agree with, is um, Candy State and Young Hearts' Run Free, which is just, oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm an, absolutely going to have to listen to that after this. Yeah, yeah, do it. You'll be like, woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ideal. Yeah, it's great. It, it just it makes you feel so, I don't know, like empowered and strong. Nice. And it's disco, so woo. Yeah, yeah. awesome. <laughs> What is it like to headline a festival? Like, I, is it just the most intimidating thing ever, or is it like super? Like, you've made it to the peak of your career. Like, how does it feel? Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, just with any show, it still feels like you know, going to the office, going to the office. Like, <laughs> except that there's just like lots of musicians and beer at the office. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's the best um, job ever. The ideal yeah. office. <laughs> It's a pretty good office. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it feels really exciting and, like, you never get sick of it because there's just so much excitement and adrenaline and I, I try not to look at the crowd before I walk on stage so that I get, like, a rush of adrenaline and, like, a rush of excitement to start playing the show. Um, and also that way I don't get nervous because I don't know what's out there. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, especially when you're headlining and say like if there's been uh, maybe another stage or another performer before you and then everyone's waiting for you being the last act of the night or whatever, then you have the whole festival there waiting and just, oh, the buzz is incredible and, uh, yeah, walking out on stage and then for me looking at them the first time to be like, wow, this is, there's so many people, looks amazing and just, yeah, it's it never gets old. It never gets less exciting. Um, yeah, it just feels so special and I feel so lucky to be able to do that, you know? And it sounds absolutely <laughs> unreal. Like I yeah. can't think of anything that would come close. Like I'm trying to like um, – like make an equivalence for like a normal person, like what a similar feeling would be like, and I just can't think of anything. Yeah, yeah. maybe being oh. in the crowd and seeing your favorite yeah. band come out—it's probably yeah. the only like, equivalent. If like ten thousand people sang happy birthday to you or something yeah. like that, it's, it's like that kind of exciting. Yes, <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah, and then also to have like the whole crowd. I imagine at this point too. I mean, I've been in the crowd so many times, and I know the lyrics to all your songs, and I'm yelling them at the top of my lungs. Yes, like. I can't even imagine like hearing that back. Yeah. Oh, I like I still remember the first time that people started singing our songs back to us, which was you know, the most exciting thing. And every single time we have a new song and people start to sing it back at us, we're like, yes, everyone knows the words. <laughs> like we've uh, obviously just released Head Like a Sieve and so people are getting to know that. And then like last night at the show we did in Darwin, um, there was no social distancing or anything like that. Wow. They've completely got rid of COVID like months and months ago. Oh, nice. So it was like a real festival. There was just shoulder to shoulder in the mosh partying. Oh, my God. It was – the vibe was absolutely incredible. It was electric. And I just kept looking at the boys on stage like with my mouth wide open like, oh, my God, this is this is what we're here for. This is the best. Um uh, but yeah, even still with some of the new songs, we don't know how they're going to go yet with the festival crowd because we haven't had the opportunity. Um, so like usually we wear in-ear monitors that we hear our sound back through, but I definitely like 
popped one of them out so that I could hear the crowd really well because nice. I wanted to know what, what they were doing and it was awesome. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was going to say, what was it like going for yeah. such a hiatus from, you know, touring and, and oh. being able to play and then coming back to that would have been... It was weird, man. <laughs> it yeah. was so weird. Like we literally stopped... Uh, mid festival run with the drop festival in March. Like, oh, we had tickets to that. We had tickets yeah. to that. And like, it was, it was the day before. The day before, yeah. and, and yep. we only found that the day before as well. Like after close of business on the Friday, that it was going to be off on the Saturday. Yeah. Um, which like was weird because I I was living in Sydney at the time, so it was going to be like, yeah, cool. I just you know drive to Manly or whatever. Yeah. But the rest of the boys were in Brisbane, so they found out the night before that. Oh, now I have a weekend off. Yeah. But the but then the weird thing about it was we were like, oh, look, we've got three weeks until the Perth show. Maybe this COVID thing will be over by then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, I remember and then the beginning. Two, that, yeah. Nine months of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's crazy that, yeah, we, yeah, we had tickets to that show. That was really when it really started to yeah. crack yeah. down here, that, that, was, that, that, that yeah. weekend. That everything started to shut. That was yes. devastating. Yeah. I was the really week looking forward to that. Up to that, we were starting to go like, Hmm, I reckon this could be like yeah. a really serious thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it I turns won't... out it was quite serious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. What yeah, was it like? It's nice to be back. Yeah. How was it to play 13 straight shows? Was it 13 <laughs> in a week? It was 13 in a week, yeah. We did an opening night on the Friday and then we did two shows a day um, for the rest of the week. So, yeah, it was extremely exhausting yeah I can imagine yeah. <laughs> uh it was fun and because it was the first shows we'd done in months it was exciting and you know we had heaps of friends and family there and even though the crowd had to sit down at tables there was some amazing like table <laughs> oh, you love um, to see it <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh so the, like the vibe was absolutely there we worried that it might be a bit weird playing for seated patrons mm. but it was not it was lovely it was almost really great in a way because people were sitting and concentrating and just like yeah. really enjoying seeing the bands so yeah. um but yeah so very exhausting about halfway through the shows we just had this massive dip sam and i both lost our voices oh. and pretty much couldn't like talk during the day and then before the shows were just like cups of tea and lozenges and like, all right, now we go and sing. Yeah. Um, but we came out the other end and, you know, everyone else helped pump us up and, and get us through the last few shows. Uh, and, yeah, we did it. And it was a huge achievement and um, I would do it again. I think we all decided, you know what, that was hard, but we would do it again. That was really fun. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's amazing. We actually have a listener question here that's kind of relevant to that. Someone yeah. asked, like, do you get sick of doing – the same thing every night. Do you ever get like, oh my god, I have to do that again? No, no. I was actually thinking about that when we were playing last night mm. because there's, you know, there's a couple of songs in our set that we have actually played at every single gig we've ever done. Oh, what song um, is so it? Fence sitter. It is fence sitter. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Hey, I was well going to say as one of the best bangers yeah. of all time. Yeah. You'll love to hear it. Yeah. So we've done. Um, Paul has a record of every single one of our shows and every single one of our set lists and, like, he wow. basically keeps the stats on our band. It's amazing. Uh, and, yeah, he uh, he's counted us and we're, we're nearly up to um, 500 shows, I think. But, oh, wow. But, yeah, Fence, Fence Sitter has been played at nearly every single one of the shows. But, yeah, I was thinking last night, like, I love these songs. I'm, <laughs> I was, I'm not – there's no way I'm going to get sick of these, like, the old ones, the new ones. I love them all. And, um, uh, like, there have been a couple that we've retired or been like, you know what, this is not us anymore. We're not going to play this anymore. But, yeah, I never get never get sick of playing, never get sick of the songs. And I think the fact that we just, like, when we did the 13 shows, we just chose a different set list for each show, not only to make it more interesting for us but as a bit of a gift for the people who, like, maybe came a few times because there were people who came to three or four shows. Oh, wow. So we want we wanted – we wanted everyone to be able to have a more wide experience and, and um, you know, make it a bit special, play songs that we never played before and stuff like that. 
So yeah. that was, yeah, why we decided to do that. And that would be a huge benefit to having such a diverse discography at this point as well. Like mm. I was going to ask yeah. as well, how do you choose a set list for a gig? Because yeah. you, have, you have so <laughs> many bangers. Like honestly, there are so many like but- massive hits from each is there, yeah. is there like a method to it? Like, a, oh, we have to have a pump up one here and we can be more chill here, but we have to yeah. end with this. Uh, at the moment, our keys player, Paul, has been doing our set lists and he actually chose the track listing for the self-titled record as well. He's just, he's got a knack for putting songs in order in a way that just flows really nicely and feels great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we we generally try and, you know, do some ups and downs during the start of the set and then really pump it up with some bangers at the end to, you know, leave people on a high. Um, but, yeah, Paul's incredible at, at making the set lists and he will often suggest what a set list should be and then we'll talk about it. Uh, but, yeah, it is getting hard having six albums worth of singles and yeah. being like, you know, if it's a set where we can put most of our singles in, then we're like, great, just the bangers, like a festival set, you would pretty much just want singles. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, when we're, when we're organising to do, say, like an hour and a half set for our headline show or something, there it's really a, you know, oh, we do, do you want to do this one? Oh, I really wanted to do this one though. Well, which one are we going to cut? Like yeah. it's, uh, yeah, a bit more complicated. Do you have a favourite song to perform? We actually had a listener that wanted to know mm. that. Yes, I do. My favourite song to perform is I Am A Dog. Oh, nice. Nice. I don't know why. I think it's it's one of my favourite of our songs and it's my favourite guitar solo um, maybe, maybe of all the songs. I just love what Dean does and like the, the, the way that he solos in some of the songs and just copies the verse – melody in the guitar solo I don't know it makes me feel so it like lifted up and excited every single time I hear it um but yeah it's just such a fun song and it's a it's a fun bass line to play uh yeah it's awesome <laughs> yeah, <that's dope. laughs> nice oh here's here's another good one um, do you have a most memorable time on stage or with the band hmm oh man everything is memorable yeah that's a, yeah it's a really hard question I don't know maybe yeah uh, I think probably some of the like really, really big festival shows that we've done um, where it's almost been overwhelming, it's been so big, like um, Splendor in the Grass main stage, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Um, like we uh, we played a, a massive show in, in Adelaide at um, Spin Off Festival with probably the biggest festival crowd we've ever done. And it's it almost feels more intimate to play a big show like that because you can't you can't see all the people. Yeah. Um, and it's just like a sea of humans. Um, but yeah, probably something like Splendor Main Stage. Um, uh, you know, you're seeing the hill in front of you and just the people everywhere and mm. singing and dancing and. Um, I don't know, there's something really, really special about being able to share music with that many people at one time. Uh, yeah, I think that you know, we all have such a fun time playing shows and it's nice to look around on stage as well and see everyone else in the band having such an awesome time. Just loving it. Just be like, ah, this is so cool, look at what we're doing. And uh, Yeah, it's a nice experience personally and musically <laughs> yeah. yeah that's amazing oh yeah mm-hmm. I, I could just your harmonies on stage i'm just gonna fan out for a second because <laughs> <laughs> I, like you, yeah I, I i can't help it yeah yeah oh, thank so you good. there's gonna be moments where i can't help but like just gush because we love your music so much <laughs> I, yeah. I, okay <laughs> <laughs> but also like um there's there's some bands that You'll listen to the the like the record or whatever, and it's it's a phenomenal album, and you love the album. But then you see them live, and I think you're one of these bands where yeah. it's so much better live somehow. I don't know how. It's yeah. like even even like the recordings, like recently, like a version. I think there was a there was a live a live version of Cherub that you did. It, like yeah. um, uh, was it yeah yeah and, it, and yeah we did that for like a version yeah, yeah and it was. Like it was better than the like to me, it felt better than the recording. Like I don't yeah. know whether it's just the fact that I can see you all in the room together, yeah. like jamming out. It's just yeah. I don't know how you do I, it, but I feel like we put a lot of energy into our performances and yeah. a lot of uh yeah, a lot of adrenaline and excitement and we let that 
yeah, flow into how we play and how we sing and I guess just, you know, this the presence on stage and everything. But, uh, you know, the thing that we love doing the most is playing together as a band uh, and I think that's been one of our strengths the whole time is, is – how well we fit together as human beings, as friends, but also um, as musicians and the ability to really lock in with each other and just, yeah, play as one organism. Um, so, yeah, we the reason we do it is to play live and, and have fun and have fun with the audience. So I think that that makes sense to me. Like mm. That's the goal, I reckon, is to is to, for it to be better, even better than you expect when you see a band live um, than, than the recording, yeah. You absolutely achieve that. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> like yeah, I'm always pinching myself. I, like, there's, like, elation after a ballpark gig. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so good. <laughs> well, this ties in perfectly to our first problem. Yeah, mm. so mm-hmm. our, like, structure of our podcast is that we try to, like, I mean, we solve the world's problems is our title. So we try to solve problems in our yeah. episode. Um, so we have two for you. The first oh. one, we kind of need to phrase it as a problem, even though it's like not a problem at all. <laughs> um, uh, but how how do you even get to be in mm. the best band of all time? Mm. Like, how do, We want to talk about your sort of career progression. And yeah. maybe we'll start with, is it true that you guys were a group assignment that just yes. kind of turned into the best group assignment of all time? Yeah, probably the world's most successful group assignment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. In, in uni, we were all studying music and um, there, was a, there was a class called um, Pop Ensemble. And so, yeah, all the people who were in the class were just, you know, sitting all over the room. And the teacher for that class literally went around the room and went, okay, you guys are a band you guys are a band, you guys are a band, just pointed at people and put them into random bands. And then our band was Ballpark. And I, I don't know, I feel like something really special happened as soon as we started playing. Like the, I came in a little bit late and I was like, oh, Jeff said I could come and sing harmonies or something. And they're like, oh, all right, well – um, <laughs> I don't know, we'll play you a song maybe and like see what you want to do. And they played me All I Want Is You because Sam, no. had, Sam had written that song when he was like 17. And um, I was like, oh, that's really awesome, but like who's going to play bass? And they went, I'm, I suppose one of us will have to play bass. So I said, find me a bass and I'll learn how to play it. <laughs> oh, so you and, not play bass. <laughs> and I did. I was at uni for singing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and That's I amazing. Just, yeah, I just loved it. And, uh, yeah, I, I played the piano, but obviously Paul was already in the band and he's an amazing keys player. And so, yeah, for the longest time I just thought about the bass guitar like it being the left hand of a piano. Um, so in my head, I was visualizing the piano notes, but then playing the bass notes. Um, so yeah, that is how it happened. And, um, and here we are. (laughs) Wow. Wow. That's another one of those things too. Like all I want is you is one of my favorite songs of all time. Not just, not just one of my favorite Paul Park songs. I asked M before. Actually, we were talking about like how amazing it is that you actually said yes to being on this podcast. And I was telling Sam about when I was 18, I was at somebody else's 18th and I, I don't know why I, but I added you guys on Snapchat. I had a ballpark on Snapchat and you just started like replying to my messages. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> Hey, I posted a cover of all time. All I want is you using my loop pedal and it's on YouTube. Do you, if you want to watch it. And then somebody watched it and replied to me and was like, that was amazing. And I was like, yes. Oh my God. I just lost my mind. <laughs> It yes, was the best think, thing ever. I think that's a huge part of it as well is like, you know, we have plenty of time and why not talk to fans? Like if there's something that you can interact with people about or like help them with or, you know, just, you know, just a simple like thank you or something yeah. is, you know, I I would love that if I if I messaged like, someone that I really admire, I'd love them to write back to me. So, yeah. you know, if you have the time, why not? Like, you know, we all love to chat and and we're all friendly people. So I think it's it's cool to just be able to, yeah, interact with fans just like, yeah, 
Yeah. Whatever. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for doing yeah. that because oh. yeah, it's it's unreal and it's I definitely think it's so important. Yeah, it really helps to like we can relate to you so much better because we know yeah. that you know you can re- you respond to our messages or yeah. we know that you're seeing us on instagram and our comments and stuff like yeah. that it's so awesome absolutely we are online all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah we um how have you we were just saying it's been almost 10 years since yeah. your first album how have you guys stayed together for so long i know that i feel like i've read some interviews somewhere that you were kind of there was a period there where it maybe was gonna peter out a little bit but you've come together and made another new yeah. album how have you stayed friends and stayed yeah. bandmates? And I don't know, they say don't work with your best friend because we obviously <laughs> haven't done that either. But <laughs> yeah. But I feel like it's just, it's such an unusual, like, as you said, like going to the office each day. Yeah. It's yeah. not like a normal office team where it's nine to five, you leave and you may not actually talk to the other people yeah. in the office that much. Like, but it's also I, so much more collaborative. Like, yeah. do you guys fight? <laughs> no, I think the only people who, who fight. Uh, the twins, but they're brothers, so they're allowed to fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all the rest of us sit there being like, eh, awkward, <laughs> you know. But we'll know that they'll be best friends again in five minutes, so it's all good. Yeah. And yeah. I think that that is what is really important about the way that we work together, and that is that we are all such close friends. And um, you know, we if we disagree about something, we can talk about it and come to a a, um, you know, agreement together, or um, it's it is like we're a family. We're yeah. we've been so close for so long. Like there's there's nothing that can get between us. Like we all love each other so much, and now you know, like some of the boys have families of their own, and we're all just like a big awesome family. Yeah. Um, and we're just yeah, just so connected to each other and open with each other and. Um, we're all very chilled people, I think. Like there's no egos, there's no, um, you know, everyone is just um, kind to each other and loves each other. <laughs> and nice. I think that that's what's kept us going the whole time is that we truly have the utmost love and respect for each other and, yeah, they're like my brothers. Yeah. Do you ever like, do you actively think about like, oh, the friendship comes first, like before and before the music, before playing a show, anything like that, the friendship comes first. I know that Sam and I, that's <laughs> our sort of philosophy is if yeah. we're having a disagreement about the podcast or if something, like if there's a deadline that we can't meet, it doesn't matter because the yeah. friendship comes first. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it all just like Blends. goes in together. The friendship yeah. is, uh, the like part of the friendship <laughs> is we we work together and part of the why we work together so well is the friendship. So, it's, yeah. it's all in together and I think that that's part of what really keeps us going so strong. Yeah, awesome. nice. I feel like there's a, a good question which almost segues into the, mm-hmm. the second problem. Did you want to talk about the first problem anymore? Or? I'd be interested, I mean, you've kind of touched on it already a little bit that you sort of started out in music wanting to be a singer and the fact that you weren't a bassist to begin with just blows yeah. my mind. <laughs> it's crazy to me, that's <laughs> awesome. But, yeah, do you... What, what did you – I don't know how do I even frame this. Are you trying to ask about um, like her career? Like your personal career yeah. progression yeah, and how that's kind of – if there was well, like maybe a moment that you realised you'd made it or mm. if it's different, if this is different to how you imagined your career in music would go? Well, I always like, you know, literally since forever, since I was a little child, all I wanted to do was music and I started – playing like solo gigs when I was about 15 or 16 um, and I would just be like me singing with a piano or a guitar and um, that sort of thing and it was, it was kind of like the opposite to how the market is at the moment back then um, like if you were a solo female performer there's no way that you're going to get played on radio mm-hmm. it was like now if you're a solo female performer and you're good you have a good chance of getting played on radio and stuff like there's so much more opportunities for um for female performers um but yeah when like when we went to uni I'd been playing solo for like I don't know like five or six years already uh and I'd been playing with a with a band behind me and stuff as well but like getting in in the band with the boys and playing together like something clicked and I was like I flip and love this. Like yeah. this makes me feel 
so complete <laughs> and this is what Amazing. I want to do. Um, and, yeah, it's weird even though I wasn't playing my songs, in a way I almost felt more connected to the music. And But I guess it was just a different, uh, like, part of my musicianship to be like, I play the bass guitar now and yeah. <laughs> like I'm doing things differently. I'm changing it up and I get to do harmonies all the time, which I love doing so much. Ever since I was a kid, I've loved doing harmonies. We are um, exactly <laughs> the same. Yes, <laughs> so good. It's actually a perfect tie-in to our mm. second problem, which is more about what it's like to be a woman in music mm. right now. Um, and specifically, I'm interested because you're the only woman – in your band. Yeah. Mm. I'm the only woman in the whole touring party. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But, is that? Yeah. I mean, I I don't know. I don't even notice that I'm the only woman in the touring party until cool. I consciously think about it. Like, until yeah. people on a podcast bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I think what is the most important thing is just, you know, our – our makeup as a band and, and how we treat each other and just, yeah, the fact that we are all equals and we always have been and, um, you know, the, the boys don't treat me any differently to, they, to how they treat one another and I don't treat them any differently to how I would treat anyone else, any other friend. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so then that's the same with anyone else that we work with in terms of crew and stuff like Everyone gets treated equally and, um, uh, yeah, it's – I think that we've been really lucky to have, uh, like, the band that we do and have worked with the crew that we have that are all so um, just, like, really kind and respectful people. You know, as soon as if, – if we ever work with someone who we don't gel with or is, you know, condescending in any sort of way, we're just like, that's right, we won't work with you anymore you know and there's no conversation about it it's just like oh yeah that's fine you you know don't have to do that again or whatever um but yeah I I think that we have been extremely lucky um in yeah the the people that we've we've dealt with over our career um obviously there's always um you know people around especially you know, when there's when there's places where there's more musicians, like at festivals and stuff like that, there's you know sometimes yeah. there'll be musicians getting really drunk and really annoying, and you have mm. to sort of I <laughs> I don't know, have to almost get the boys to be like, can you guys leave us alone, please? <laughs> like, yeah, sometimes that sort of thing. But yeah, I think being a a woman as part of a band ensemble, I feel like is um, a lot easier than than being a, a female solo artist. For sure. There's so much pressure put on um, a female solo artist to, you know, look right, to act right, to dress right, to, you know, fit in with all these sort of trends and things that you, like, have to do. Um, that even with indie music and even with uh, rock music and stuff too, you know, to be perceived a certain way. And I often talk um, to Sam, our singer, about it like that, you know, he doesn't have the same pressure because he's a man and if he wants to just, you know, get out of bed, not shave, not do his hair, chuck a T-shirt and jeans on and go be a rock star, he can. Yeah. But yep. there's like so much pressure put on women to, to yeah, be perceived a certain way um, and, um, yeah, and it's certainly a huge thing if you are a solo performer or you know like even a, like a female only band um to yeah look and act a certain way and I think that's extremely unfair um but yeah I think I try to uh just like really be myself in in everything that I do so that um you know if there's maybe young young musicians or musicians that look up to ballpark um, especially female ones who want to go out and do their own thing to just be like, yeah, don't follow what anyone else does. Just be yourself and you, know, you don't have to listen to what the record label stylist says if you want to look a certain way or wear something. As long as you're happy doing it, that's all you need to do. You know, you don't need to, you don't need to be told what to do. That's silly. Yeah. <laughs> 
I was just about to ask, do you have any advice for any um, musicians trying to Mm. sort of make it in the industry, particularly young women? But, yeah, you've kind of. Yeah. Well, my main advice for young musicians is to play as much as you can. Like there's because of the whole online presence thing, there's so much of like, you know, looking, looking good and, you know, being a popular online presence and having cool songs. But if you, if you don't gig and you don't understand how shows and gigging works, your shows aren't going to be any good. So the best thing that you can do is get in front of audiences and just hone your craft and play as much as humanly possible. And that's how you gain fans as well because people will see how you perform and they get to see your personality on stage and build a connection with that. So that is, yeah, that's the most important thing. That's better than having 30,000 Instagram followers. Yeah. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Even with like when it came to starting this podcast, I feel like it was it was hard to start because – we are like, oh, we're not going to be very good at the beginning. Like it's going to be, even though we've done so many projects and things together before, we were like, ah, oh, you know, can, like it, there was that trepidation beforehand. We're like, no, we got to just do it, start doing it. We're going to get better. Yeah, and absolutely. so we just, we just stuck to it. We just do yeah. it every week yeah. and like yeah. Yeah. it's come on. I listen we got to, to a lot of podcasts and I listen to them all from the first episode because yeah. I love to hear how they improve over time. <laughs> it's awesome. Like, and al- yeah. also you like, you get to know the people as well because it, they start off, you know, sometimes very just conversational and like, oh, we're doing a podcast and then yeah. it becomes so professional and you're like, I feel so proud of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah well, it's, that's absolutely the way to go. Just, yeah, from the ground up in, every, in, you know, any industry, it's best to work your way up. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I just have another general, general question anyway while we're figuring this out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's about the self-titled album. Yes. Um, I, I didn't think anything of it. I, when I heard that you were doing a self-titled album, I was like, oh, absolutely. And, like, I heard the album, I was like, this is perfect because it sounded like you lent into everything that, like, you've become as a band. It just felt like the quintessential ballpark album to me. Yeah. I was like, I'm so proud of them. This is the best sounding. <laughs> I was so happy. I was stoked. And one of yeah. my mates was like, yeah, but kind of weird for them to do a self-titled album at the end, right? Isn't that normally the first thing you do? I was like, oh, yeah. I'd never thought about that before. So how, <laughs> yeah. how did you end up coming to self-titling an album when it's one of, mm. you know, halfway through your career yeah. kind of thing? So, well, we had another title for it. and Mostly Sunny, right? Yeah, and the more and more that we recorded songs and finished songs and added new songs – and then COVID was happening. We were like, <laughs> this is becoming less and less positive. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yet, yeah, and there was a moment where we all went, this does not suit the record anymore. Um, it was because originally the album was almost going to be like a follow on from Good Mood. Mm hmm. And then, yeah, then it wasn't. Then it was really different. <laughs> then it was more like, it was like happiness and surrounding suburbs, but crossed with every night the same dream, dream crossed with something new and different altogether. Yep. Um, but then, yeah, we were so proud of what we were coming out with and that it really was a big mix of everything that we've done so far plus what we're doing now that it, it really fit. And we'd been wanting to do a self-titled for ages but there was never an album that fit it. But yeah. when, yeah, when we sort of surfaced the idea of what, what if we make this one self-titled, like everyone was like, lock it in. That is so yep. perfect. So, yeah, it was a no-brainer. We just, um, yeah, we knew that that was, that was the way to go. Nice. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It just yep. it, it felt so right. Yeah. Yay. Oh, that's so cool that you think that as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think cannot wait to hear it live. Like just oh itching. Oh my god, I know. I can't. <laughs> Hopefully, it won't be too long. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a hard year. We we yeah. are very big gig fans. We love going to Yay. so many live awesome. music shows. So this year has been tough. Yeah. But Jen, we have a, a section as well where we mm-hmm. try to um, we get our guest to give us a problem oh, and yes. we try to solve it as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you have any problems at all? It can be as small as I do have a problem. Okay, Okay, hit us. (laughs) We're ready. (laughs) Okay, so I recently moved house. Uh, In fact, I moved house on Wednesday and and today is Sunday. And so I have two cats Mm -hmm. 
and I was living in an apartment and the apartment had a spare bathroom. So I put their litter trays in the spare bathroom and that was like their space. Mm -hmm. However, now I'm in a house which only has one bathroom. It's a big bathroom, but it is just one bathroom. Mm -hmm. And um, my partner doesn't want the litter trays in the bathroom because, you know, litter trays can be a little bit smelly. Yeah. But it's also the only tiled area in the house. Mm. And and now I have this dilemma of do I get like the regular covered litter trays, put them in the bathroom and just like, you know, clean them twice a day and try and keep the cat smell down because cat smell is terrible? Or do I spend $895 on a litter <laughs> robot? <laughs> Which is like this globe thing where that has the litter in it, and every time your cat goes, it the cat gets out, and then the globe spins around, and it like takes out the wet and the solids, and then spins back around, and all the stuff drops into a sealed container at the bottom, and then you're left with a fresh tray again. That and one. You, that one. I know. Right? <laughs> Sounds like the good option, but that's a lot of money. It's yeah, a why? lot. It's like that's nearly a thousand dollars for a litter tray. But yeah, but that's so cool. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm all for robots helping me with my tasks. You know, I've got a dishwasher. I've got a robot yeah, vacuum. Exactly. You know, like robots can help me. But I just, you know, also maybe eight hundred ninety-five dollars is the cost of Tom's sanity. You know, like Absolutely. if the house is going to smell less like cats and the robot is going to pick up poop for me that's pretty cool because also changing it twice a day is a big Mm. commitment i was gonna say i would pay 895 dollars so that i don't have to do that twice yeah and you only have to like the sealed section underneath uh you it's got a bag in it and then when you pull it out you just take the bag out and put it in the bin and that's like once every 10 days oh that seems like the best investment Mm, I know, and it like it has an eighteen month warranty, which doesn't seem like enough, but I'm sure it would last longer than that because it's you know nine hundred dollar <laughs> yeah. cat litter tray. Yeah, yeah. you <laughs> hope that it would. <laughs> yeah. Hope that it would last like at least you know I don't know six or seven years, and yeah. Yeah. you know my cats are seniors, so I just want it for the rest of their lives. You know, that would be great. Yeah, mm. Mm. So you anyway, know, that's at my the risk problem. of just you know. Pushing capitalism on you, 100% spend the money. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly just yeah. to save the time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. To save the time, to, to make our house smell nice. I just, yeah, I feel like, I, and they have like zip pay, so it's not like I would have to spend the whole thing oh, in one yeah. go. So, you know. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm so leaning towards that. <laughs> yeah, sorry to encourage you, but that, I think that's the yeah, better option. That's like, oh, they yep. cost more than our couches. <laughs> <laughs> worth it. Oh, yeah. Worth it. Okay, cool. Problem solved. Ideal. Oh, nailed it. Nailed it. We Woo! very rarely actually solve problems <laughs> on this yeah. podcast. <laughs> oh, I feel, I feel like, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, it's a pretty easy problem to solve. Yeah. We've yeah. had a lot of pet-related problems, actually. Yeah. And, I feel like yeah. like pets are amazing and we absolutely love them, but they do cause a lot of problems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. yeah. Eh, oh, well, love them though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. We might move quickly on to recommendations for mm-hmm. this week. So we just tried to recommend something that, I don't know, has been making us happy or that we have been really enjoying. We find it's a good way for people to get to know us a little bit more yeah. and what we're kind of interested in. I cool. tend to recommend a lot of songs. Yeah, because <laughs> nice. Sam just sends me music every day instead of responding to me <laughs> properly via yeah. message. So I I'm got like, him to start. We need start. to do this thing for the podcast. I'm like, here's a song. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so now he gets to deliver all his music recommendations on the podcast. Yeah. So, cool. That is excellent. <laughs> yes. Do you have your recommendation? No, I don't today. Okay. Oh. Let me... No, no, I will. I will be there. But, yeah, I'm still stalling. Okay. Well, look it up. My recommendation is very, um, I don't know, very simple. It's there's – I okay, I love iced coffee, but I'm lactose intolerant and I can never find a good iced coffee that I can just, like, buy at Woolies. Like, you know uh-huh. how, like, there's, like, dare iced coffees and stuff? Yep. But there's an Inside Out almond iced coffee. I think Inside Out is the brand. Uh-huh. It's so good and it makes Yay. me so happy. Oh, that is awesome. That's yeah. um yeah, I don't drink dairy and there is I can give you another recommendation. Yes, please. At Coles, it's a it's a iced mocha. Ooh. Um and it is also on almond milk. Um 
uh, I, oh, I look, I'm, I'm going to look up the name of it because it's, it's yes, definitely. Yes, this is necessary. Like uh, <laughs> almond milk calls. <laughs> I'm literally writing it down because I want to yes. go get one. <laughs> um, okay, the brand is Califia Farms. C A L I F I A. And then, yeah, so Coles has um, the mocha one. Yeah. Which is delicious. It's in a, in a brown plastic thing. Yeah. Uh, and then also, Woolworths often sells um, a big bottle of the iced coffee if you are into like one to have at home or whatever. So, yeah. Yes. And yoy. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that your recommendation or do you have another one? Um, no, that was just an off-the-cuff recommendation for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my recommendation is um, the Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun show on Netflix. <laughs> yes, I recommended that. Yes. I think a week oh, or two ago. You've already yeah. done that? Okay, I'm I a can, huge fan. I yeah. can keep it. One, but, no, 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 that's um, fine. I've now watched it three times. It is so and, funny. Um, I haven't yeah. watched it yet. I feel like now oh, I really need to. It is so ridiculously good and um, all of us in ballpark love it, which is something that's really rare. Yes. We, don't all, <laughs> we don't generally all love something, but, yeah, we've we've just – been quoting it and watching it over and over and over again and at first my partner did not understand it and was like mm, I don't get it I don't think it's that funny and then we it's watched it absurd. again and I was like see see and he's like yeah it's actually really funny <laughs> and now <laughs> and now he quotes bits from it um to me so my favorite character is Cowdoy yes <laughs> Cowdoy <laughs> yeah Cowdoy uh. <laughs> ugly and dish is good <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my god nice. oh, they're, they're, they're the funniest guys just yes. on of all time so, so i was so absurd, so oh. amazingly funny absolutely we love it so much yeah. yeah how good nice no that's a great recommendation yeah Yay. Uh, and now it's been recommended twice so, yeah, so you all to. you listeners like me who haven't listened we yeah, need absolutely. to go Check watch it, it 15 times so they get a second season so i can mm-hmm. watch even more of their <laughs> hilarious content um Yay. I'm, st- I'm stumped today for a recommendation. Oh. I'm sorry. You don't have another song? Can I give you a song uh, to listen to? Yes. 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 Jen can have my recommendation for today. Okay. I'll, I'll have I'll your be recommendation honored. for today. And uh, my song recommendation for you guys to, to listen to is um, one of my absolute favorites of the last year. Is a song by Carla Geneve from Western okay. Australia. And it's called um, Don't Want to Be Your Lover. Okay. It is rockin'. And just, it is full of oh, emotion. So, so, so cool. Yeah. That's my favorite yeah. thing. I'm, I love, like, music is my catharsis thing. I'll yes. just, like, put on an uh, album and yeah, melt fully. away. Yeah, her songs are amazing. And her she's only, like, 21 and her voice is so powerful and incredible. And, uh, yeah, I, I first heard her song, Greg's Discount Chemist, and was like, I don't know what this is, but I love this. And I shazammed it so many times. And I was like, yes, it's this song. Um, so, yeah. And then when I heard this new one, I was like, that has got to be Carla Geneve. And, uh, yeah, I think I've listened to it probably a million times. But, yeah. Awesome. Nice. How, how do you normally go about finding new music? Mm. Um, generally just recommendations from people. Okay. Um, some it's definitely – I actually like this, the like Spotify feature when you put a song on that you like and then it does the radio based on that song. Yeah. yeah. So depending on what the song is, sometimes you can get some absolutely amazing stuff come up and discover mm. stuff that you didn't know before. Um, so, yeah, I, pr- I probably do that more than like find playlists, just like yeah. let the radio show me stuff that yeah, I may or may not know already. Um, but yeah, I like to take recommendations because generally, yeah. you know, friends and stuff will know what I like to listen yeah. to. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. I used to like scour through JPlay back in the day mm. when it was still around. Yeah. But oh well. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Um, I just have like one more question as well that I would be like regret if I didn't ask, but like, yeah. um, What's the most starstruck you've ever been? <laughs> this is probably the most starstruck I've ever been right now. Yeah. Oh, well, li- hey, you're being really coherent. 
Thank you. Thank you. It's been hard. We're going to just like. Once this ends, we're just going to freak out for yeah. like five minutes straight. <laughs> oh, once this ends, I'm going to hop in the van and go to the airport. <laughs> just be Not like, jealous. I don't want to fly. Oh, yeah. um, so probably like the most starstruck slash just the funniest situation we've been in, the band and I. Uh, got introduced to Daniel Johns from Silverchair. Oh, nice. Uh, it was at like an industry function and I think we just like walked up to the circle and they were like, oh, Daniel, this is Ballpark. Like you like Ballpark. That's That was that song that you showed me. And he's like, oh, cool. Like nice to meet you guys. And then we all just stood there like stunned mullets and were just like, Oh, you know us? <laughs> Hi. And like literally no one said anything, which oh was God. just which is so out of character because we are chatty. Yeah. And um yeah, we were all just so starstruck. And then he was like, Cool, I'm I just have to go outside and we're like, Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, I'll see ya <laughs> And we're like, Oh do <laughs> That's nailed, so cool. Nailed that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was very funny. But yeah, we're you know usually when you meet someone, you can at least be like, "Hey, like we um we met Bernard Fanning recently, and he's just wow. such a lovely guy." So we were, and we had a lot in common, like everyone being from Brisbane. So we were just like, mm-hmm. "Blah blah 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 blah, Brisbane, yeah. woo!" And um, yeah. but yeah. Meeting Daniel Johns was, you know, was basically our childhood idol, like for all of us. So we're just like, <gasps> wow. <laughs> and the only thing I could think of to say was like, my nana really liked you. <laughs> 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 oh, it was weird. It was great. It's fine. And then we, we like, we ended up going and having dinner with um, him and Birds of Tokyo and stuff later on, and it was oh, fine and, and oh nice. My God. But uh, yeah, it was just like, um. <laughs> What are we doing here? <laughs> I feel like I don't yeah. belong here. Do you think that they feel the same way? Because, like, I don't know, there must be a level of mutual respect there. Cause yeah, I think, like, you can, yeah, you can tell when, when there's that level of mutual respect and it, like, it usually comes with a lot of talking and that's, yeah. and that's awesome because you have lots of things to, to talk about. But, yeah, it's a funny time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, thank you so much for being Yay. You and like just yeah. coming on our and, podcast. Yeah. You are so also, welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks to be one of our three Twitter followers for a hot second. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that we, was cute. Yeah, you were. Lit- that's how we like saw that you followed us because I was like, oh, we have three. I just, wonder who they are. Just created oh. the account because yeah, we like there are so many social medias now. And we're like, well, we're uh, yeah. gonna try oh, and just put the many. podcast out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah, gotta be on Twitter if you're a pod. Yeah, yeah. That's it. We're making our way there. Thank you, you so much you for talking so to us today. Thank you yeah. for having me. Thanks for asking me. It was fun. No, thank you. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can subscribe, leave us a review, follow us on Instagram, um, show us where you're listening by posting and tagging us on Instagram. We also have a Patreon account and you can uh, subscribe there and support us if you'd like. Also, the music is by The Vinyl Press and you can find them on Instagram at The Vinyl Press. Yeah, and send us any problems that you have. We want to solve them for you. Woo!